Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're going to do the last part, part four of the uh, predicting and forecasting data, Tesla data, in Python. And we're going to use LSTM, long short-term memory, which is a neural uh, process that we're going to do, and I'll go over that in a minute, um, neural networks that we're going to use to, to create a highly accurate prediction or forecast of this data. So now if you haven't watched parts one, two, and three, you need to go back and watch those because part one shows you how we get the data from Yahoo Finance to get it for a period or a date range. Part two is going to show you uh, moving averages and how we're going to help determine, you know, if this is good viable data to use. Same with part three, which uses daily returns to see if it's a homogenous data set how much variability or variance is there in it, and is it uh, normally distributed? So that's what we do in, in video three. So this is video four. So let's start right off with creating our training and test data sets. So you've already pulled in data. We know we have it in stock underscore DF, our data frame. And so what we're doing is this. We're creating a new data frame with only the close column, the closing data for that day. Um, so that's right here, stock underscore DF dot filter, and you're going to filter it to close, obviously. We're going to convert it to a numpy array, which is just this, data dot values, data set equals data dot values. At the number of rows to train the model on, so if we take 95%, that's what we're looking at here, we've got the training data len, which is your length, equals integer of NP dot seal for like sealing, len, length of the data set times 0.95 and then if you run training data len which is this training dot or training underscore data underscore len it gives you 1529 as our output and we need to scale the data if you don't scale it's not going to work so from sk learn pre-processing we're going to import the min max scaler that's this right here and then we're going to do our feature range of 0, 0, 1. So we want it between the values of 0 and 1. So that's why you see below all these values of 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.015, on up to 0 0.67, and so forth. Um, scale data equals scalar.fit underscore transform your data set. And that's obviously data set from above. And then uh, scaled underscore data if I run that it just gives me what I see below which is the array of the zero to one values next what we do is we create the training data set and the scaled training data set so we train data right here equals scaled data zero integer training data length uh, or underscore len comma colon and then we split this into an X and Y training data sets, which is very simple. You just put the brackets, X train, Y train, and then we fill them. So for I in range of 60 comma len train data, X underscore train dot append and Y train dot append based on the first one is I minus 60, I comma zero, and the second one is just I comma zero. And if I less than equals 61, you print it, X and Y, and then print. And then we convert the X train and the Y train to numpy arrays again, like we did before. So the same kind of concept here is NP dot array for convert to numpy array of X train comma and NP array of Y train. And we put that into X train comma Y train. And we reshape the data. So x underscore train equals np for numpy, reshape, x train, x train shape 0, x train shape 1, comma 1. That gives us this right here when we run that. If you run x train shape, we get the array, and it shows you here it's all between 0 and 1. And again here. Now we need to use, if you don't have TensorFlow, you need to install it. This is how you install it. Exclamation mark, pick three, install TensorFlow. From CARES models, import sequential, import dense, and import LSTM. Okay, that's the fun stuff, the LSTM, long short-term memory. Again, we're gonna build the LSTM model, which is long short-term memory. And it's an artificial recurrent neural network that tends to be very accurate if done on good data. Obviously, if you do on bad data, it's not going to be very accurate, if accurate at all. 
Now that's why we also did videos two and three where we want to look at our data with moving averages and daily returns to make sure it was good, solid data. Okay, so anyway, we're gonna build the LST model. So we got model equals sequential, that's what you want. Then you've got model dot add LSTM 128 return sequences equals true input shape equals X train shape one comma one, just like that. Then we've got model add LSTM 64 return sequences equals false. And then model dot add dense 25 and model dot add dense one. So we do all of this right here. Then we compile the model, right? So we got model dot compile optimizer equals atom loss equals mean squared error. That's what I'm using here. There's different, obviously, models you can use. This is the one we're using right here. Train the model. Model.fit. Okay, so we're going to fit the model on our X underscore train and Y underscore train. Batch size equals one. Epex equals one. Now, you can use different batch sizes. It's up to you. So we're using at this point right now. Now, when you build this, you have to wait about 40, 45 seconds or so for the model fit to run. If you go on to the next step, you're not letting it run. It's going to sit there and then it'll start to spool up in about 20 seconds and you'll see it when it does. And this will start to fill up. Okay. So that's our output, all 1,469 values. Now we create the testing data set. So we got a new array containing the scaled values from the index 1543 to 2002. So we've got test underscore data equals scaled data, training data len minus 60, like we did before. Now we're going to create the data sets X test and Y test. So we got the X test and Y test right here equals different training data length. For I in range 60 len test data, X test append test data I minus 60 colon I comma zero. So remember, we're taking 60 of those off. So convert the data to a numpy array. X test equals numpy array, np dot array, x underscore test. And we reshape the data, right? Again, x underscore test equals np dot reshape, x test, x test dot shape zero, x test dot shape one. Remember, zero to one, comma one the model's predicted price values. So we need the predictions. What's your model dot predict of X test? X underscore test actually. And predictions equals scalar dot inverse underscore transfer form of predictions. So that gives us our predictions. Now get the root mean squared error. So this is where you test this. Okay, so we built the model. We've reshaped the data. Is it good? So we look at the root mean squared error first, which is np dot square root of the np, this is obviously numpy, np dot mean of predictions minus y test times times two, and then just run the RMSE just like this. And you get 44.70, 32, so on. More important, so that gives you an idea that you're going to be fairly accurate with this. But more important than the root mean squared error is also the MAPE, the mean absolute percentage error. How much error chance do you have here? So the MAPE equals, same thing with NUMPY, MAPE equals NP dot mean, NP dot absolute of Y test minus the predictions over Y test or divided by Y test times 100. And then just run MAPE just like you did RMSC. MAPE is the opposite of this. So when you get 5.2305, that means that you subtract it from 100, right? And you end up with 94.76 or so as your percentage. That's pretty darn good for uh, predicting uh, stock values, especially like Tesla with that big run up in 2020. So next we want to do is we want to visualize this. Um, so first, uh, there is a warning that you get sometimes with pandas on a copy of a slice, which is immaterial. So if you run this, this gets rid of that stupid warning, pd.options.mode.chain to sign underscore assignment equals none. That gets rid of that warn. Okay, the warning. Um, then you plot the data. So to plot the data, we have our training data set, 
are valid and our valid predictions. We're going to have all three of them on there. So we've got data for training data length, data training data length, again for valid, and then valid predictions equals predictions from above. Now we visualize the data, we'll plot dot figure. You got to figure the size that you want. Obviously, I want it longer than tall for this to show it correctly in Jupyter Notebooks. So I've got plot dot figure fig size equals 13 comma 5. It worked perfectly for this. You might want to look bigger, taller, that's up to you. Um, plot dot title, stock price forecast, LSTM model. Obviously, I want to put that here. And the X label is date, which is down below. Uh, you see right there right here and um, font size equals 13 for that we've also got the closing price in US dollars and that's 13 again and then we're plotting the train the valid and uh, against each other and the legend is going to be train valid and predictions and uh, it's this just tells you where do you want the legend to be I picked up the left you could have put it or lower right wherever you want it looks great right there because the data is all over here it depends on how your data shows to where you want the legend to be and then of course you end there with plot dot show if you don't put that it doesn't show it um, so this is a great looking graph that shows our uh, training data which is the data before right so we cut it off there remember and then we use the test data or the validating data is r or r is red and then the uh, predictions are in a goldish orangish color here and that's right there and if you look at that that's an amazing fit which goes in line with what we have earlier which is about a 90 what do you say 96 percent MAPE um, which is our value we got that's why we do a lot of testing so the MAPE shows that the RMSE shows basically you know 44 uh, as our uh, mean squared error um, but which shows that it's going to be fairly accurate but the MAPE shows you it's going to be very accurate the MAPE is more accurate than the RMSC value for telling you that in most cases and when you look at this here you can clearly see we have a very accurate prediction based off of our Tesla data um, going back from 2015 on up to 20 deep into 2021 and we can predict look at that it predicted that it would fall not go up um, and it got it very, very on right there. So that is very good. That's using LSTM. I know I went through a lot of code there really quick, but you can go back and replay this and slow it down and find the portions that you want. It shows you everything you need there to be able to create uh, this. And then if you go back and you look at video one, where we pull the data from Yahoo Finance in the first place for Tesla data from 2015 to 2020. Obviously, you could pick any date range you wanted to. Um, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, you need to have several years worth and you want to have some peaks and some troughs. If you don't, like if I just pick this up to here without some of these troughs in there, uh, it may not be as accurate. And that's what you would get to see when you start running MAPE and your RMSC and the other uh, data you're looking at. So for instance, in video two, when you look at the uh, daily returns and the moving averages, that's what I was trying to think of. So the moving averages start to show you how the data, you know, how close it is, how it's within a certain percentage of the moving average, and then uh, the daily returns, and then the RMSC and the MAPE to figure out exactly how accurate it's gonna be. And then right here, you can see that we clearly have a very accurate prediction or forecast based off our LSTM model on Tesla data from 2015 to 2021. Hope you found this interesting and informational. Again, just go back and watch the video part that you need. Obviously, one, to get the data, two, and three, to start looking at the data, see if it's normally distributed, see if it's going to be good uh, low variance data. Um, and then part four, this part right here, this video right here, so you can actually predict that. And then we still test it again after that to see how accurate it is before we go and display it. Because I want to make sure, you know, is this a good, you know, obviously if the MAPE came up being 70%, that's a big difference between that and 94%. You'd see this moving way out of the ranges. Look at how great that fit is. So that shows us we tested this well, we have good data, and we were able to predict or forecast um, Tesla with 
very accurate results. Hope you found this interesting and informational. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share, and have a great day. Thank you.